Shabbat Shalom. I hope that you guys are having a great Sabbath. If you celebrate the Sabbath, if not, I hope that you guys have a great Saturday morning. I want to bring something to your attention that the Ruach just dropped in my spirit a little bit ago, and I, I just had to share it with you. When we think about Jezebel and people who teach on the spirit of Jezebel, we often um, we often portray Jezebel as this assertive, um, go-getter, independent type of woman that ruled over her husband. Um, but I want to take you back to the scripture. You know, we can't do this. We can't teach doctrines of men and fables, or wise fables and fairy tales and then slap doctrine, a label called doctrine on it, and then pass it down from generation to generation and pray against what we call the spirit of Jezebel. We don't even know who Jezebel was. We don't know where she came from. You know, I'm not going to get into the whole spirit of Jezebel thing, but if, if we were to entertain that type of teaching, the very first thing that ought to come up in your spirit the very first question that ought to come up in your mind, the mind of your spirit, is where Jezebel came from. Who was Jezebel? How did Ahab find Jezebel? If you go to 1 Kings 16, if you read on the lineage of Ahab, Ahab had, let's see here, one, two, three, four, at least in the first Kings 16, in the chapter 16 of first Kings, at least four descendants of Ahab were kings of Israel that all rebelled against the Most High Yah. They were leadership. They were in leadership. They were kings. We have Basha. We have Elah, we have Zimri and Amri, all descendants of King Ahab, kings of Israel. And the word says that they all did evil in the sight of the Most High, in the sight of Elohim. So there was a, a heritage, there was a, a spirit of disobedience and rebellion in Ahab's bloodline. And, he, and they were Israel. Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? So, we, by the time we get to the introduction of King Ahab in 1 Kings 16 and 29, Ahab, the son of King Amri, began to reign over Israel. And Ahab, the son of Amri, reigned over Israel and Samaria 22 years. Ahab, the son of Omri, did more evil in the sight of the Elohim than all who were before him. So Ahab took it up a notch. He decided he wanted to worship Baal. Okay? The sons of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, were seen as minor for him to walk in. For he took Jezebel, the daughter of Ephbaal, king of the Sidonians as his wife and went and served Baal and worshipped him. Now let's stop there for a second. Queens were not in, in <laughs> the Israelites did not the kings that were over Israel queens did not just go walk up to the king and say yo king here I am king hey baby don't you just love my eyes don't you just love my hair just love my body. No, queens did not do that. Kings sought out their queens. Okay? I repeat, kings sought out their queens and groomed their queens for a period of time before they married them and they became queens. So this means, I mean, hey, hello, King Ahasuerus and Queen Esther. Hello. Queen Vashti, King Ahasuerus, didn't just up and marry anybody. 
he chose his queen. He had his queens to be, pending queens, if you will, groomed. He sought them out. He, the, the king sought the queens out. They groomed them. And then married them and made them queens. So that, mean, that means just by virtue of culture and historical context, King Ahab sought out Ebal. He sought out Jezebel, whose people served Baal religiously. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? He raised an altar for Baal, I'm on verse 32, in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. Ahab made Asherah and did more to provoke Elohim, Yah of Israel, to anger than all the kings of Israel preceded. Who preceded him? Who were prior to him? His ancestors, if you will. So that means he was more evil than his ancestors. The, the, the level of evil increased with each generation. And we don't even hear. We don't even understand. Jezebel was groomed to be Jezebel. I repeat. What you call Jezebel, what you know as Jezebel, was groomed to be Jezebel. She wasn't Jezebel from birth. She wasn't Jezebel even when she was betrothed or being groomed for King Ahab. She was groomed to be Jezebel. She was invited to the, to the palace. She was invited to be in authority with the king. She was proposed to. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? So Jezebel was not inherently evil in and of herself. Please understand that. For all you people that want to demonize Jezebel and make Jezebel out to be the, the nuclear bomb of what is called the church. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Who groomed Jezebel? Who said, Jezebel, come on, I want you to be my queen? Who empowered Jezebel? Who, who called for Jezebel? The king who had a lineage of evil in his bloodline. The king, who had a, a heritage of rebellion and disobedience to the Most High, Yah, that's who. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Y'all are so busy demonizing women and fashioning her, labeling women on this false perception and image of Queen Jezebel. I mean, if you're going to go way back in history and cite history and, and say that there is a spirit of Jezebel, then you need to do it accurately. You need to do it accurately. The, the definition of insanity is teaching the same thing, doing the same thing, and expecting a different result. If you really believe there, the spirit of Jezebel is on the rise and on the increase, then you need to look at your leadership. You need to look at your leadership. Your leadership is inviting and grooming and invoking what you call Jezebel into your congregations. Your leadership is empowering Jezebel. So the women ain't the problem. The women with the wake up and the earrings and the short dresses and the reputations, they're not the problem. The women who you think are bossy and assertive and try to usurp authority over a man when they really aren't, 
they're not the problem. The very presence of what you think is a Jezebel means that there is a problem in the leadership that invited Jezebel to come in. In the if there was a problem, there was a breach in the leadership that has groomed Jezebel. Mm-hmm. 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 If you really do believe there is a spirit of Jezebel that needs to be cast out of your church and your congregations, you need to look at leadership. You need to look at leadership. Because that means that there is a lineage, there is a heritage of evil and rebellion and wickedness in the line, in the lineage of the leadership that has not been dealt with, that has not been repented of. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The leadership has not repented. The leadership has not stopped. There was something in the leadership that keeps invoking what you call Jezebel. Deal with it from the root. The root is in leadership. The root of Jezebel is in what is in leadership that keeps inviting Jezebel in. When you deal with that breach in leadership, that curse in leadership, mm-hmm, 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 you'll get rid of what you call Jezebel. Stop it. Stop it. Stop dealing with the symptoms and not dealing with the cause. You deal with the root of the issue. And then you'll see some deliverance. Shabbat Shalom and be blessed. In the name of Yahushua HaMashiach.